They even hide the process by which they have quietly relieved us of the burden of making choices for ourselves. It remains a complete mystery who has really done the choosing. We are carried along by the nobody without making any real choices, becoming ever more deeply ensnared in inauthenticity. This process can only be reversed if we explicitly bring ourselves back from our lostness in the they. But this bringing back must have that kind of being by the neglect of which we have lost ourselves in inauthenticity. From Martin Heidegger's Being and Time, 1927. Do you know why it feels like we live in a simulation? It's because we are putting ourselves in one. With complacency, laziness, distractions, satisfaction, being content, content. Of course, I'm not here to tell you how we can solve this entire situation or tell you if we do or do not actually live in a simulation. I'm not sure if I even have an opinion one way or another. But as a philosopher, I definitely do know one thing. There is living authentically and living inauthentically. And the theory of living in a simulation to me just speaks to how completely inauthentic the world is. So with that, let us dive right into it. <laughs> the first and foremost reason why the world feels so deeply inauthentic right now is because we do live in a capitalistic society. And unfortunate as this is, it is because everyone wants to make money. They want to be famous to make money. And if you watched my last video, basically all of this boils down to having a stress-free life and not having to worry about money. Or they're quite literally attached to the numbers rising and rising and rising. And if they're plateauing, that's not more money, that's the same amount of money, right? And what the capitalistic world does not care about is us individuals, human beings. Unless, of course, they are trying to sell us something, be it self-help, self-development, self-care, self-love, blah, 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 blah. And then we're important, right? Because we're buying their products and making ourselves better. But no, even to that end, most, you know, 99% of companies still only care about their bottom dollar, to which means that Products are supposed to help you or, you know, be with you every day on your skin or something still has terribly bad materials in it or otherwise just is literally bad for you. Remember those super cool running shoes all the hot moms were wearing with the big roundy bottom that were supposed to help you get a nice good butt but then turned out to just wreck your entire body? Your, all your bones were not good? No, no one needs rounded feet. Again, no, it's all about the bottom dollar. <laughs> or in a more general sense, take for instance, diet soda. Diet soda is supposed to help us feel like we're eating and drinking better, but no, 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 no. Replacing sugar with something poisonous is not eating better. No, it's actually eating poison drinking poison. Super fun fact time here. Aspartame was discovered in 1965 and then FDA approved in 1981. But now, 42 years later, we have finally come to our senses and realized it is not a healthy substitute for sugar. It is not. The World Health Organization, or the WHO, actually said it very well might be carcinogenic. I think they're afraid to release the full study to where it says, yes, without a doubt, 100% a carcinogenic. Um, but yeah, aspartame is not good. It is not good. So if you think companies care about us, no. <laughs> they care about their money and their bottom dollar. Now you might be wondering, Alex, uh, what is this have to do with living in a simulation. And trust me, it does. Trust the process. You are completely right, but at the same time, this is completely 
involved. We used to live in a world with a safe and healthy diet soda, and now we don't. We went from diet soda has always been a healthy alternative to real soda, to diet soda has always been a dangerous alternative to regular soda. Not too dissimilar to Oceana has always been at war with Eurasia to Oceana has always been at war with East Asia. 1984, of course. Our simulation has been altered slightly, but not only for the present and future, but in this case also for the past. Now, of course, we don't go and rewrite our media. Some websites still say that aspartame is fine and dandy and super safe. But to a true extent, because the internet is pretty much all we use, very soon all websites will say that aspartame is dangerous and not good. And so with that alone, does it not seem like we are in a simulation that we can just rewrite, discover a new, rewrite everything all over again? <laughs> but this is getting a little far-fetched here, and so we can bring it down on a much smaller level with humans. Have you ever noticed that humans talk like this? I have always done this like this. Or, I have never done that like that. And it's like, girlfriend, you've only done this like two or three times. How do you know what you always or never do? Try something new. <laughs> but really, it's like if you try something once or twice, or if something's just simply more constant now than it was before, it's an always or a never. And it's not. That's impossible. That's, that's the trick here. We're tricking our brains into thinking something is a constant when the only real constant is like time. In creating this always and never reality, truly what we're doing is writing the future and the past as just this set in stone, never changing thing. And this is why we will feel, we will feel like we're in a rut or that nothing's changing or that life is mundane is because we, we don't we don't change them. We, we just keep things exactly the way they are. Every day we do this at this time. Or every Friday we do this at this time. No, just most Fridays, if that is the case. <laughs> but what this does is create one constant, perpetual, perennial truth that doesn't actually exist. For instance, in the morning, I always drink my coffee and don't talk to me, I can't talk until I've had my coffee. Or after dinner, I always watch some TV and scroll on my phone before bed. Can't skip that. <laughs> These are not truths, okay? They are just your current habits. And habits can change in the blink of an eye or, you know, scientifically, like 30 days, but still, you want to change your habits, you gotta stop thinking of them as an always or a never, because that does not exist. I cannot say it enough. But the big one I think here is that we have this now as an always, when it's really just like a new thing becomes an, a habit, and now it's always, and it's like, no, no, no back it up. We can see our life as more than just the now, the current state, the past few days or weeks, whatever. But then there is the very, very, very classic never say never. If you think you never do something, you'll never do it. And maybe you'll want to do it one day. And having that development on your, your character sheet isn't productive to your future unless it is something dangerous like I, I never do hard drugs that is you know that is alex approved right there <laughs> but as we are both writing and living our lives it is important not to form a character or conform to an archetype or just be a caricature of what you think you are. 
you know? Really, it's like creating your being as this recognizable and maybe relatable thing that's just your outward face. It's not your, your true being. And you can change either of these things very easily, very quickly. Your face doesn't have to be your face forever. <laughs> you can grow. You can change if you don't want who you are to be who you think everyone thinks you are. It's, it's not necessary. <laughs> but especially when it comes to the things like, I always forget my keys. Oh, what a klutz. Classic me. You don't have to prescribe to that uh, vision of yourself. You can grow to be better. I know forgetting your keys is like the worst, most mundane example, but, you know, fill in the blank, you know, classic me doesn't have to be you anymore. If you want to change yourself, people will respect a growth in you to where they will change what they think is classic you. I'm really hoping this is making sense. If I need to do a whole new video on Goffman's face work, just let me know. I think my video on it is like two years old at this point. Probably a piece of sh Just the same words like will and won't, or much more importantly, can and can't. But we do in fact not live in a world made of ones and zeros. I guess I'm stating we don't live in a simulation purely controlled by ones and zeros. Can and cannot, will and won't, do, don't. This isn't real. <laughs> we make these up every single day. We don't live in a world where things are operated with or without or the complete inability of either of those things to do things. The ability to do things, the ability not to do things, or neither. There, there is a difference here. This is an important differentiation we need to make because there are three options when it comes to robots. Robots alone, not, not us humans. I believe it's the first rule in the rules of robotics that robots cannot hurt humans nor can they just stand around watching humans get hurt. So, they cannot hurt humans, period. And this means that they are specifically programmed to not do something to which they know what is and is not that thing. However, if robots weren't very specifically coded to not hurt humans, they very well could do it because can and cannot are now both options. You see, this is very difficult to explain, but really, very often we say that we can't do something when we can. And this is really that we are choosing not to, that we won't versus will. We know this because we aren't coded to not do things. We are choosing if we can or cannot. So you see why there's there's three options here. We have the free will to choose can or cannot. We are not coded with can or cannot as one option. We are not coded in any certain way until we code ourselves and program ourselves to say, no, you are always a blonde, or no, you always wear black. I'm just picking on myself, I don't know. So with robots and Isaac Asimov's rule of robotics, robots cannot harm humans because they were coded to not harm humans. And without these very, very, very clear instructions, it becomes a will and won't situation. It becomes free will if you will. Then we have to see if the robot has the ability to do any of those. Then we might have to think about programming in some rules. Very, very, very luckily, I guess, we are born with free will. We are not programmed to any degree until, you know, our thrownness happens to fall upon us. Very often, we are programmed by our parents, our teachers, growing up, watching 
you know, at church, the television, TV, movies, music, our social circles, the people around us, heck, even the people in the store might influence us one shape or another. And through all this, we, we as a society, have learned some great rules to, to live by, to be completely coded into our brains forever, like, thou shall not kill, and that's about it that I can think of. And then there are the silly little ones that might be more niche, maybe we made them up ourselves, like, thou shall not go on the highway, or thou shall not go parasailing. But honestly, how often is it that we are just conforming to a character that we have written to portray us into the world, that the, we want the world to view us as? Or how often is it that we are just scared to get into new things and we don't see ourselves doing it because we don't want to? Not that we don't have a, an interest in parasailing or something. Maybe we do. But there, there's a, a fear there. It, it's really hard to say whether or not it's a genuine fear because some things can be literally dangerous or if it's that we are protecting our face, our image, our who we think we are, you know, the character we've built. But how, how often into this are we just eventually a sim in a simulation where we, we click a button and we say, time to eat time to woohoo, eventually, or maybe just on a bad day, we turn into NPCs, non-player characters, where we're just moving about in the motions of life, where everything we do all day long has been already decided for us, maybe by us a very long time ago, or just recently, but they're no longer our decisions, and we're just moving like a sim someone's playing on their laptop. <laughs> and then in this mode of being, Heidegger pretty much calls it our autopilot. And what's unfortunate is that some people will take a week or a month, a half a year, a full year, before they stop and realize and think for the first time in all of that time, period. They just think and make their own decision for a, a quick moment. And what I want to highlight here is that we do truly always need to take a second and think not only about what we do, but what we don't do as well. And all of the generalities that we create for ourselves with the always and the never fake philosophy mentality to where you, you're writing a story where you're a character in it. You're no longer writing your story, your big story. You're just living this. If I were to suggest a solution as to how we can escape the simulation we live in, whether we've made it ourselves or I can't tell you how to escape uh, actual simulation life, definitely one we've just made for ourselves or our, our local society has, but it would be this. Make your own decisions every day with everything, not too much obviously, but like truly, authentically decide. Think for yourself over and over and over again. Again, not too much, but authentically. <laughs> but most important of all, your past self has not set your current or future self in stone. If you want to make a decision that is a different decision than your past self, that is perfectly amazing as a more authentic decision now than ever before. Decisions or just habits, habits in general, which be, were once a decision and are no longer really a decision anymore, those are the things that your past self has not set in stone. There's no stones. No stone unturned here. I truly believe that being on autopilot just drains our batteries. And then when we finally have time to think and do something for ourselves, we are completely out of juice. Our battery is empty. And so we cannot keep on living like this if it's what takes up all of our energy to get out of it, to get to get out of, of being on autopilot. We can't be on autopilot. And so 
the sooner we start, <laughs> the sooner, the easier it will be to just authentically make decisions all the time. To where maybe you can let some go to autopilot, but others not. Very similarly to like a yearly review at work. Maybe take a second and look at all of your habits, all of your non-decisions that were once a decision and decide for yourself if you want to continue doing that, you know? To where maybe we can have a nice balance of authenticity and autopilot, to where our autopilot is not the inauthenticity that are they, society has decided for us, but it is what we have decided for us. So it's not inauthenticity driven by society, again, just inauthentically ourselves. <laughs> I really hope that makes sense. Heidegger's work can be deep. I can't think of any other word. But to wrap up all of these thoughts here, we only live in a simulation if we put ourselves in one. If we move in autopilot, inauthentically, every day, maybe just sitting, watching TV, scrolling our phones, until it's the next day, and the next day, and the next day. All until the simulation is over. Now that's not how I want to live. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> no, I do know about you guys. All of my viewers are wonderful, beautiful people. If you wouldn't be, then you wouldn't be here. Um, let's be honest, our channel here is pretty niche in just trying to be our best selves and somehow that's a... Uh, not common? <laughs> Maybe the huge... Uh, you know, philosophical aspect is what makes it a little bit more niche, but but still, you guys are super duper awesome and amazing. So thank you so much for for watching the video. I really hope you like this one. Um, as you can tell by my voice, it's over. It's over now. You're you're watching non-video, I guess. <laughs> Um, but just a shout out, I was looking at the calendar before recording the video, and for our next post date, I'll be in Japan? Um, so there won't be a video, I guess. That's crazy to think. So if you guys have any advice for my traveling there, uh, if you have before, I would love to hear about it. Otherwise, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that simulation theory. Is it all man-made? Probably. But that's, you know... The, is it alien made? <laughs> if this simulation's a giant computer, it's it's either one of those. But I'm saying, is it self-made? That's the real question. Um, <laughs> classic me can't say goodbye. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and thank you so so much for spending some time with me here. I truly appreciate it. And again, hope you have super duper great rest of your day. Alright, bye! I love you!